Hey, Get Better Basketball community. This is Coach DeMarco with another episode of Focus. Today's episode is going to act a little bit more like a mini coaching clinic as I take you through my favorite offense to use against the 2 3 defense. This is called 12 Power or 1 2 2 Power, and an offense that I used for many years against 2 3 zone defenses. One of the things I recognize as a coach is that when you play against zone defense, teams have a tendency to settle for outside shots. And if you're hitting, that's great. But in the outside chance that you're not scoring from the perimeter, you need to find ways to attack a zone from the inside out. This is why I started using 12 power to get the ball into the paint, to have high-low scoring opportunities, and to play inside and then back out for open three-point shots. You're gonna love this set against the two-three zone. Before I jump into it, make sure you hit the like button below and turn on your notifications as you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You're gonna love the videos I put out each and every week to help you continue to grow as a coach. You're definitely gonna wanna continue to check out this video as I take a deep dive into one two, two power, which will help you successfully attack a 2-3 zone. Let's jump into it. Today, as we jump into one two, two power, make sure if you have any questions, you leave a comment below, and I'll be sure to answer each and every one of them. You can also reach out to me on Twitter via DM, at coach underscore DeMarco. Why one two, two power? We decided on the name power as a team because you can attack a 2-3 zone from the inside out. You're gonna get scoring opportunities in the paint. You're gonna have high-low options and you'll also have opportunities to get the ball inside and then kick it back out on the perimeter for three-point scoring opportunities. As noted before, we wanted the ball into the middle and wanted to play inside out using this zone offense. One of the things I love about it is there's a lot of wrinkles that you can add off of it. Everything from ball screening the zone, which is not something I'm gonna talk about today in the basic setup, but your wheels are gonna to start to spin as you watch this, to also having our interior players pop out to the wing, creating a five out or a four out setup, which can create two on one or three on two advantages for you against the two, three zone. This is the basic setup of one, two, two power you'll notice that there's a point guard up at the top, the three and the two out on the wings, and then you have two interior players, your four and your five. There's a lot of different things you can do with these five players, but this is the basic setup. One of the things I think it's important to mention is that you have to use basic principles to attack a two, three zone. This setup and offense is great. It's gonna create a ton of advantages for you, but you also have to think about attacking the middle using ball fakes, penetrating the seams, forcing two defenders to play one offensive player to create advantages against the zone, and many, many other basic principles of any great zone offense. So this setup and this play is gonna work great for your team, but also make sure you emphasize the keys to attacking a 2-3 zone, and I just noted a couple of those for you right there. Before I jump into how to initiate the action in one, two, two power, I want to note that you can go four across and make this a one, four high set, which we did. And it's something that can create advantages for you by forcing the defense to move up and open up some space under the basket. So you could use this setup. And we did that though. It was not our basic set. The one, two, two was, you could also go one, four low. I shared a great play on my YouTube channel, which I'll add in the description below, which is a quick hitter against the zone where you get the ball into the corner and you screen the zone. You could also start in a one four low setup. There's a lot of different wrinkles, as I've noted multiple times, that you can use with one two two power. And it can be as simple as your alignment. There's also other things you can do with the movement, which I'll take you through a little bit today but I'm really gonna focus on the basic principles. The basic setup is in fact, a one, two, two set, our one here, our three and our two, and then our two players underneath the basket. 
And that's going to be the best way that I think to start off with your team. The first pass is going to go to one wing or the other, again, depending on your initial setup. Right here, we're going to have the ball go from 01 over to 03. When 03 gets the ball, 04 is going to cut to the high post, and 05 is going to pop out to the short corner. The way I drew this up, which is the case in a really good 2-3 zone, is this 4 is going to come out here, and then the 1 hopefully will recover, and the 4 will then drop back down. Obviously, that's going to give you a chance to pass back up to the top. The 2 would then rotate and you get a quick swing over to the other side, forcing a forward to come out and a dump inside. You're gonna see as we go through this, there's a lot of great opportunities that you'll have, but this is the basic action. Pass to the wing, five is gonna pop out to the short corner, four is gonna to come to the high post. You could also have five come high and have four come across five's face and pop out to the short corner. Whichever action you wanna use, I like this one. We kept it really simple. When three has the ball, just remember to remind players they can hit 05 in the short corner. They can hit 04 at the high post. They can skip it across the two. They can reverse it back to the one. They can attack the closeout. They can use a shot fake or a ball fake. Those are all basic reads that they'll have. I'm not gonna take you through that with every pass. But it's important to review that, especially at the youth or lower level high school, you know, freshman or JV levels, to really emphasize some of those basic aspects of attacking a 2-3 zone. And I did it as a varsity coach with my team. I can also tell you that there are college programs that use this offense, and I'm sure they're doing that as well. The next pass we're going to take you through is a pass from three down to four. You're gonna notice that one is starting to recover and the forward is gonna eventually drop down here. But for now, the, the center X5 is gonna to have to pop out. And that's gonna give us a couple of different opportunities. When five gets the ball and four is recovering, we can get our high post and dive them right down the middle. We can go from five to four and there's a nice scoring opportunity in the paint. We also could go from five across and pass over to the two, which I'll take you through in a minute. Before I jump into any type of skip passes, I just wanna note here that if we do get that pass from the short corner, and this is all happening very quickly, right? We're getting a pass to three, right down to the short corner, quick cut down the middle. If that forward has to come over, it's very easy for four to catch and then kick opposite. So we would teach our our wing player to kind of relocate on that cut down um, if when they saw that pass going to kind of relocate so it's a, they're in the kind of the open window that player just turns and hits them with the pass way too long for this player to recover you're going to get an open three-point opportunity we got a lot of open threes out of that um, you know pass middle and then a quick pass back out to the opposite side of the floor and again that happens quickly and I do want to mention too and I think it's really important, is that sometimes it takes two, three, four rotations in a type of offense like this. So I'm just giving you like a very quick look at pass wing, and this is the action. But remember, there's going to be a pass to the wing, and these players are going to move. It's going to go to the top, and there's going to be continuous movement because it's going to be a continuity type offense. And I think that's important to note as well. If four is not open on this cut down the middle because two does a great job kind of hugging them and riding them down into the paint or three gets over, whatever reason, maybe there's not a good enough angle, five can skip over the top to two, which is going to cause a scramble situation by X2 or the guard up here and X3 or the forward to get out. Now you have a long closeout and you're going to get into one of those situations where you're going to have two players, they're going to play one they're both going to be sprinting out and they're going to have to communicate really well to decide which one of them is going to take ball. And it's kind of that in-between spot on the floor. And what I really like out of this a lot of times is the forward kind of closes out. It's a ball fake and a drive to the baseline. And when the center comes over, it's a little shuffle down to this uh, five player uh, for a layup, or it could just be an open scoring opportunity, an open shot. There's a lot of things that can come out of it. 
you could pass back up to the top and that player could attack the middle, that player could shoot. So again, every time there's a skip or a rotation, there's a lot of things that can go right for your team. And it, and it goes back to those basic principles. If you can skip over the top of the zone here, you're gonna get probably a good look. Um, there might be times where you can't skip over the top. Maybe there's three players aware of it and they're playing back a little bit and you didn't have the middle because X2 did a good job you know, maybe now five is able to attack or it's a skip back up to the top or a pass back to the three. So there's a lot of different things that can come out of, you know, uh, each, each rotation with the basketball. Once that pass does go over to two, we're gonna say that skip happened. We're gonna get our four, who's then gonna cut the diagonal and they're gonna be the short corner player. And we're gonna get our five, who's gonna then cut to the high post. And we're gonna get that same look again. We can go from two into the short corner to the four, um, which then gonna cause the five to come out and all those rotations I talked about before. Or there's times where that skip goes over the top to two and four cuts right down to the block and it's a quick pass to them and a quick layup. And that often happens, or they might kind of jump stop, spin back to the middle and score. Uh, so there's opportunities for that to happen. There's going to be an opportunity for the two to hit the five at the high post and five to go high low uh, with that four player. Uh, there's skip out opportunities. So every rotation, many options, I keep noting that, but I do want to mention the diagonal cuts. This is going to be kind of that continuity piece. High cut, cut to the short, short corner, those, those are gonna be continuous actions that are gonna happen. You could also have a player cut through to overload a side. The one could cut through to the low corner. Again, that's getting to more advanced stuff. We're gonna stick with the basic actions for today. The ball is skipped across over to 03. I wanna note here that 05 is gonna now become that short corner player and 04 is gonna be the player that cuts to the high post. If we rewind, to the previous slide, you're going to see that when 02 had the ball, 04 was your short corner player and 05 was your high post player. Now, again, when it goes to 03, we're going to see those cuts. It's really important for 05 to get to that short corner because it's going to pull this center out of the paint, which could open up a middle opportunity. It's going to bring the forward over. It's going to open up a skip to the outside. So the number of options are really gonna be great. You could have them cut to the block, and I know some teams do depending on the player they have there, but it's gonna, it's gonna stretch the defense a little bit less. That short corner area against the two, three zone puts a lot of pressure on them. And it's one of my favorite places to really get the ball because it opens up this middle cut or potentially some, some opportunities to go from low to high or skip. You could also have this five cut all the way to the corner. We did that against certain teams. We also use this against other types of zones. When we started one four high, sometimes we would have that player go out to the corner. That's getting a little bit more advanced. I'm gonna really try to stick with the basic, but there's so many options and so much I could share with you in things in, uh, that we did with this zone offense and wrinkles that we had off of it. But again, just note, note, take note of the continuity piece where 04 is gonna come high and 05 is gonna to go to the short corner. Now, not every pass is gonna be a skip pass across from 02 to 03. Many times it's not gonna happen and it's gonna be a pass to 501. In this instance, the pass is gonna go from two to five, which is gonna cause one to pinch in here. Five is immediately gonna catch and they're gonna to square to the hoop. Huge coaching point for us. Catch and square, look at the basket, make yourself a threat. Can they shoot? Can they head fake and drive on this five player? Can they go high low with the four on a bounce pass or a lob pass for a dunk or a layup? What you're gonna see is that five or the center is gonna, the defensive player is gonna come out a little bit when they see your taller player catch the ball here that is gonna open up space behind them. It's gonna force three and four to collapse in, which then gives you another option. They catch and square, there's no shot, four is not open. 
because four and three did a nice job. Catch, look opposite. Three is going to be open for an opportunity to play against a long closeout when four has to recover out there. And then you can cut on the diagonals again, or three could head fake and go right to the basket and score here. Don't forget when five catches, they can flip out to one here and almost bump screen the guard and one could have an open three pointer at the top. So, so many different options that you're going to get every time there's a pass, I'm taking you quickly through them, but I urge you to reach out to me. If you have questions, I probably could even pull up some film clip of my team using this offense successfully during the season. Here's a look at the three options. Once five catches, you got the low option. They have an option to score, to drive, or to kick to one, or to kick out to three. So this is a nice look at those three options that I just took you through in the last slide. Remember, they have to catch and square, look at the hoop, that's just good basketball, make themselves a threat. If they don't look at the hoop, these other players are gonna sag off and they're not gonna have to play defense on them. And if this player is not someone that is capable of scoring from here or one dribble drive to the basket, then defenses are gonna sag and it's gonna be a lot less effective. Really work on the ability of these players to score in the triangle area from the short corner and also from this elbow area. Head fake, one dribble drive is gonna be huge on this center. You can really take advantage against less athletic centers. We did that, had a couple of great centers. I was fortunate to coach that were excellent at that. Head fake, one dribble drive against the zone, tons of points in the paint for us. Last couple of slides I just wanna take you through if the pass does go back up to the top. Let's say, you know, two had the ball, skips not open, pass the five's not open, short corner's not open. They're gonna rotate back up to the top. One could certainly head fake and attack the zone. I love actually when one gets this pass, they attack the five steps up and they lay it off to the four on the block. They also could attack when four pinches and skip the three for an open three pointer. I'm taking you through all these options as I keep saying to you, but you're gonna see it and you're gonna have to coach it and practice with your players and watch film. And really, you know, the decision-making piece is such an important part of basketball and you're gonna be as good with this zone offense as your team is at making great decisions. So it's important to emphasize those other important areas of attacking a zone or really any defense and decision-making is of course pivotal. So one gets the ball back up at the top. Let's say they don't have a scoring opportunity. Uh, they're not gonna take a three-pointer from here. They could make a quick pass into five in the middle when five gets the ball, they can go low, they can go opposite, and they can score. If they do go opposite to the three, here comes the continuity piece again. Think about it. I'm gonna not hit the next slide for a second here. I want you to think about what's the next action? What's five need to do, and what does four need to do in this instance? And if you said five's gonna cut diagonal to the short corner, four's gonna cut opposite to the elbow, then you got it, which I'm sure most coaches got it. I'm sure most players probably got it at this point as well. Just having a little fun as I go through this video. Um, I love this offense. You can see how passionate I am at the opportunities it gives you. And you can even see in this slide, you're gonna get, when the ball goes in the middle, as I rewind, the five, the center's gonna take notice, these guards are gonna take notice, and it's gonna force on a pass back out this forward to really hedge out on the wing until the one can recover. And what, what's that gonna open? Well, when five makes that diagonal cut, there's a good chance they're gonna be open one-on-one -on -one against the center. If not, they're gonna be open in the short corner and four could be open at the high post. Again, so many options, but you have to coach the basic uh, points to attacking any defense or any zone defense using ball fakes, getting the ball middle, getting it opposite, uh, attacking the seams, as we noted a couple of times here. And I'll just mention against the 2-3 zone, this is a great seam. We have a really nice opportunity after five cuts that we could actually attack into this seam. This four player we taught 
as five cuts, they could actually hold for a second and give three an opportunity to get into the paint. When five steps up, three could certainly dump off to them on a seal. So there's coaching points and things that are going to come up and adjustments you're going to make during a game or in practice where players might hold for a second. They might not cut right away. When they do cut, they have to cut hard. They want to sit in the open windows. You know, between X1 and X4 will be an open window. The short corner is going to create an open window. So all those coaching points are going to be pivotal to your success against this or any type of zone defense. I pulled this slide up because I want to show you the basic setup, the pass to the wing, the diagonal cut, the pop to the short corner, the pass to the short corner, the cut down the middle, and then the scoring opportunity or the pass opposite. That's just one rotation. But please know that as we look at this, I took you through a skip pass over to the two and that that's an opportunity to then skip over to the three. So it's going to take multiple rotations for this to be as effective as it can be. You're not always going to score on the first rotation. I hope you enjoyed this video on my favorite zone offense to use against the 2-3 zone, 12 power. You see that there's so many opportunities to score. Every rotation, every time the ball is caught in a different spot on the floor, there's opportunities to get it middle, which I love, to skip opposite, to play out a long closeout, to force two to cover one, to attack the seams, and I could go on and on and on. You know I love this offense. It worked great for my team. And I strongly encourage you to reach out to me directly below in the comments area. Drop me a comment. Let me know how this worked for your team. Let me know what questions you have. And I can even connect with you individually if you want to go through this in more detail with me. I'd love to share some of the wrinkles that are more advanced with coaches at the high school and college level, including options out of the 1-4 setup and also ball screen options and screening the zone out of this basic one, two, two power setup. If you like this video, make sure you hit like below, subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on your notifications. The more subscribers I get, the more videos I'm putting out each and every week. So it's important that you like this, turn on your notifications and subscribe to let me know how you're feeling, let me know you love this content, and I'll continue to share more great videos and film breakdowns each and every week. As always, get better every day. I also have to thank Dr. Dish Basketball for continuing to be a great partner. Dr. Dish has the greatest all-purpose shooting machine. If you're not using a Dr. Dish with your team, then you're missing out on an opportunity to get in extra reps to help your team become the best group of shooters they can be. Dr. Dish has a ton of great deals going on right now, including one where if you mention G Bet BB Chat or the Get Better Basketball Chat, you'll get up to $300 off select Dr. Dish models. Get in touch with Dr. Dish. Mention that offer and don't miss out on a great opportunity to get better.